Next up is waxing. I got my homegirl Juanita to give us some information on preparation, the actual service, as well as aftercare. We caught up with her at work at the Connection Salon up north. I'll have all the information below. So I hope that you guys enjoy and that you learn something. I do waxing, I do makeup, I also perform facials and microdermabrasion and all of your skin needs. Um, in most cases, the hair should be at least a quarter of an inch to a half an inch long. Um, now your hair grows in three different cycles. So after you shave, you may see the bulk and the, the coarser hair come through and you think, oh, it's a lot of hair. Um, but if it's any shorter than a quarter of an inch, you could run into issues as far as bumps or irritation from waxing because the hair is too short to lift. Um, so really, I'd say if you want to get waxed, wait at least three weeks after shaving to do any type of waxing procedure on any part of your body. Also, medications. Are you taking any sort of medication from the doctor, whether it's antibiotics, um, uh, retinol products for your skin or any type of acne medication, whether you're taking an oral or a topical. Um, all of these things can really sensitize the skin, dry it out, thin it out, um, and then when you get waxed, you have more of a problem with worrying about your skin lifting or ripping off. So you really have to communicate with your, your skin therapist, whoever's waxing you, before you get these services done. Let them know if you're taking anything so they can let you know if it's a contraindication to your skin and if you can get waxed at that time. Um, also try to avoid caffeine and alcohol for at least 24 hours before you get your waxing service. That way you can ensure a really comfortable, easy wax without the irritation or worry of bruising just because of the blood flow. Um, you can also get waxed while you're on your period, especially if you're worrying about Brazilian waxing. Um, there's a lot more blood flow in that area, so you will feel more sensitive to it. So just uh, keep that in mind if you're worried about your sensitivity. If not, I'd say do it a week after or a week before your waxing or two weeks after or two weeks prior to your waxing. Also, if you have any type of STDs or any other type of disease that can be a contraindication to your waxing, now, if a person does have STDs, for example, like herpes, um, even if you do not have a current breakout that's going on, if you get waxed in that area, it can cause a flare-up, which can make the breakout come on, um, just because it's overstimulating the area, so it's going to want to come out. So just keep that in mind as well. If you have any other diseases, especially HIV, please let your esthetician know, um, just for the safety of you and other people and that person who's uh, doing the service. On to cleanliness. Uh, be sure that the person is washing their hands before they start the service on you. Also, um, I always keep baby wipes out for clients to wipe down if they're not feeling so fresh or if they need a clean area, if you've been sweating. If the person does not have baby wipes out or anything for you, um, be sure that the person can wipe you down and cleanse the area, whether it's your arms, your underarms, your bikini area, or even your eyebrows, just to be sure the area is clean. Um, also, a lot of times people do use baby powder. Um, the baby powder is mainly intended to dry the skin. So if you sweat a lot or if there's a lot of moisture in the area, the baby powder just helps to dry the area. So when you do wax, everything comes off clean and neat without worrying of uh, uh, leftover hair or anything that can be left behind on the skin. So when you're in the room, uh, look around the room. Be, be aware of your surroundings. See the wax pot area and see if there's any wax or hair, any type of residue that's left over on the area or whatever the, the things are sitting on, whether it's towels, anything that's laid out. If you see hairs or dust and filth, um, make mention of that to your therapist and tell them that you're concerned about it. Um, if they don't take the initiative to wipe the area down, get up and leave. Um, also, when they clean their tools, if you notice that they're only putting their products in alcohol in their, with their utensils, that does not sterilize or disinfect tools. Um, alcohol is only intended for your hands. 
if you're going to clean um, your tools or anything that they're using on you. So make sure that they use a barbicide. Barbicide, you'll notice, is a blue tinted color. Um, and it kills all disease, all forms of in issues like STDs or uh, HIV. It kills all those viruses. Um, alcohol does not. The biggest mistake that people make when they're waxing or when you notice when you're getting waxed is double dipping. Um, prime example for myself, uh, I had a Brazilian wax once by a woman that I knew and she was waxing me and by the time we got to the back area, she double dipped the stick and I saw her do it. I made mention to it, she acted like, oh the wax is hot enough to kill it, kill the bacteria, whatever, it'll be fine. That is not true. The wax cannot get hot enough to kill bacteria if the stick is double dipped into it. You have to think about areas where if somebody's bleeding, if there's open skin that the stick is touching, that has been lifted, um, irritated skin, anything. Disease can be spread very easily, um, especially if you're doing the back side of anybody. The back is going to be prone to having some stuff there that you don't want to be put back on your body. So if you ever notice a person double dip a stick, then say something and you can get up and leave. One of the first things you want to avoid is really hot water. Um, when you rip out the hairs, you're like an open wound. So your skin is more uh, vulnerable to taking in bacteria or infection. So the last thing you want to do is take a really hot shower and cause the pores to be more open um, because then you're going to have a more sensitive area of wherever you waxed. Um, your legs, underarms, bikini, face, anything. Um, so try to stay away from really hot water for a couple days. Also, uh, sun exposure. Um, if you get anything waxed on your body, especially for women, if you're taking birth control and you're getting your face waxed, you're already more sensitive because of the birth control to the sun. So if you're getting waxed, you're going to have more problems with brown spots, um, pigmentation and things on your face. Certain birth control can cause pigmentation to the face or even parts of the body. So just be aware of what you're taking um, and protecting your face with sunscreen and your body with sunscreen at all times. Um, also, if you go tanning, you should not go tanning for a week before or after your waxing. Um, anywhere you get waxed, you're going to have more irritation and the sun will damage the area and cause more darkness. So if you're worried about your bikini looking dark and it's not because of the hair, you've got to stay out in the sun. Especially for people who are more pale skinned, you tend to bruise or become more red easy. So if you have irritation of sensitivity and redness, um, apply cortisone to the area. I actually prefer a cortisone cream. I like the one with the aloe. It's not greasy and it absorbs right into the skin and it will calm the area down. Just don't use it any longer than five days because it does thin out the skin, but by that time your skin should be healed. Now if you have concerns with bumps or ingrown hairs, uh, tea tree oil is fantastic, uh, but just don't use it for longer than a week or else it will over exfoliate your skin and you'll have a little bit of flakiness. So after your wax service, I wouldn't use it more than um, probably like three to five days at the most. Um, when you use tea tree oil, only use a couple drops onto a piece of cotton and then dilute it with water and you can wipe the area down that's affected. Uh, that way it'll really keep the area clean, free of infection, um, especially for people who have a lower immune system. If you're worried and more concerned about getting infection, tea tree oil is a great natural alternative that you can use that's very good for the skin. Also, I love coconut oil. Coconut oil is another natural substitute to use that, will, that I use to wipe down the area of any residue of wax that may be left behind. Um, as a therapist, I always try to thoroughly, thoroughly clean the person well so when they leave they feel cleaner than they were when they came in. Um, and the oil doesn't clog the pores, it's more absorbing to the skin and it helps to heal the skin. Um, coconut oil also is a natural antibacterial uh, oil so it keeps the area clean as well as hydrated um, but it won't cause your pores to clog. So it keeps the area clean as well as hydrated um, but it won't cause your pores to clog. Um, another key point for your aftercare is to exfoliate, exfoliate, exfoliate. Um, exfoliation is really important, whether it's manual and whether you do a dry brushing of your body or using uh, a, a loofah cloth. Loofah sponges 
tend to hold a lot more bacteria inside them, so it's best to keep those away from certain areas you're getting waxed. They tend to harbor more bacteria in them because they don't always dry fully all the way through. Um, I like to use cloths. Exfoliating cloths are great. They dry up very quickly. Um, or you can use sugar. Uh, brown sugar is very gentle. So if you mix a little bit of brown sugar with your wash and just cleanse your body, that way you keep yourself away from the oily residue if you don't want to clog your pores. Um, I know when the hairs start to grow in, you may feel a little bit of a chafing, and that's when you should really start exfoliating the area. Now, if you have questions about waxing or would like to come in for your first service, with the best coochie waxer in Chicago, please give me a call, 773-342-6333. Or you can visit us at connectionsalon.com. Thanks. Now it's the sickest, 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 the sickest, so nasty. But I know underneath that makeup's a classy. Got them fish nets, booty shorts, early, now she wearing them. Rockin' blonde